patch notes. Destiny 2 update 7.3.6 activities crucible. Updated the playlist tool tips to correctly display which matchmaking style is used for each mode. Fixed an issue with a special ammo crate location was incorrectly displayed in the announcement when picked up on Vostok. Added the hardware modifier to Crucible Labs for testing. Added a sound effect for the special ammo incoming announcement when special ammo crate is about to spawn. Oh, okay. All right, so now everybody knows. Competitive. Remove survival and countdown rush from the competitive playlist and replace with a 3v3 clash and collision. Collision. Updated the zone placements for Vostok and Dead Cliffs. Updated several special ammo crate placements on Ultra Flame, Anomaly, Endless Veil, Eternity, and Multiplex. Now Clash. Replace the special ammo meter system with special ammo crates for 3v3 clash. Now enable a unified competitive rule set for collision and clash. Game length is 10 minutes. Respawn is 7 seconds. Revives enable. Special ammo crate or special ammo spawns 4 crates 60 seconds and shared. Heavy ammo spawns single crate 120 seconds not shared. Expanded the not swap modifier to cover changing ammo types in either your kinetic or energy slots mid-life. Reduced variation in competitive rank adjustments on match completion. Now trials. Post-game weapon drops will now reward the weekly weapon. That is, if it's an adept summoner for that week, only summoners will be dropping for you. For the first two weeks, special ammo crate variants will be tested in trials alongside the non-swap modifier. Now, Raids and Dungeons, Crota's in. Fix an issue where all players could die and wipe at the same time that Crota is defeated, awarding loot, but not awarding completion of the encounter. Yes, that was a bug that's been around for a while. Deepstone Crypt, fix an issue where shooting the 8-tracks replication attached to a player would cause ammo to spawn. Really? Warlord's Ruin fixed an issue in the Gel Puzzle where Glaive Projectiles and Bow Arrows cannot hit targets consistently. Fixed an issue in the Ogre Encounter where the Warden Knight on the right side of the stage wouldn't spawn totems consistently. Wouldn't, wouldn't give you the double spawn. Improved respawn placement in the room with a giant taking orb and flying debris hazards. Huh? Okay. Now, Found Disciple adjusted some visual effects in the final encounter to mitigate some photosensitivity concerns. Now, Free Roam fixed an issue that could cause players to crash after the Arsenal Walker public event. Fixed an issue where a loud volume spike could occur when exiting the Finch Vendor screen on the Throne World. Now, some UI UX changes, guys. Fixed an issue where players had to spam click to give commendations to other players that left their activity. Fixed an issue where direct launching a quest from the quest detail screen wouldn't always launch players to the landing zones closest to the objective. Fixed an issue where the Don again mic on display no background. Fix an issue where the legacy button on the character's select screen was not working. Fix an issue where the Iron Banner legacy ornaments were missing a reward acquired sound. Fix an issue where the stasis subclass category icons at the Exo Stranger LC's vendor were using void iconography. Fix an issue where the icons for the Trials Auto Rifle, Strike, Grenade Launcher, and Dungeon Pulse Rifle Relentless were facing the incorrect way. Fix an issue where the icon for the Warlock Guardian against class item was not accurately representing the armor arts. Now, Fire Team Finder reduced the size of the Fire Team Finder banner in the roster screen, added an animation to the listing when successfully submitting an application, improved notifications for applications, and joined requests to the roster context when the players don't own the required game content. Players will now be able to see all players that are included in an application to help make a more informed decision on applying or joining listings. Oh, I gotta check this out, guys. You see like columns of players, but you gotta swap over. Fix an issue. We're, pre we're pressing reset in the join settings filter screen. Did not reset options. Fix an issue where random select button appeared in the Fire Team Finder application screen. Fix an issue where spamming buttons could load an empty activation screen, uh, activity screen. Fix an issue where the wrong selection screen appeared in Fire Team Finder when using the activity launch screen while already in a Fire Team. Fix an issue where the accept application pop up was shift when attempting to accept applications. All right, localization. Fix an issue where the text overlaps and alignment for various languages in the Guardian O screen. Fix font issues for some languages in the Summon Fire Team Finder. Gameplay and investment armor extended the handling bonus granted by Lucky Pin's illegally modded holster buff by two seconds so that it lasts until the out of luck debuff is activated. Okay. I fixed it so that the entire duration of that buff. Fix an issue where a visual bump would occur when overload artifact perks were triggered. Okay. Fix an issue where weapons that can change their elemental type were benefiting from multiple surge bonuses at once. Fix an issue with the intrinsic perk Warlord Sigil used an incorrect term for freeze. Now, these are our sandbox changes. Weapon archetypes, auto rifles, precisions, reduce base damage by 5%. Hand cannons, precisions, increase base damage by 6%. Adapt to decrease body shot damage by 1% and critical hit damage by 4%. Improve the stats of Lunas How and Midnight Coup. Let me just say this about precisions, guys, that we need to check. We need to check things like Word of Crota with Precision Instrument. Can, you know, what is the ease of use on the three tap there? Now, Pulse Rifles, Rapid Fires, increase body shot damage by 3.5% and critical hit damage by 1%. Light Waste, which includes Outbreak, increase body shot damage by 6% and critical hit damage by 3%. Adapt to decrease body shot damage by 5% and critical hit damage by 2%. Pretty nice. 
You got a God Road like Drum's Claw or something. That's good. Aggressives improves the stats. Improve the stats of Blast Furnace. Uh, Scout Rifles. Rapid Fires. Increase base damage by 2%. You've got a, a craftable thing of your Ute with Precision Instrument. Now may be the time to break it out. Some machine guns, lightweights, improve the base stats. The stats of recluse bows. Lightweights increase base damage by 6%. Love and Arc and Wishing are not affected in this change. Shotguns, precisions. Corrected a rounding issue that was causing precision shotguns to require one extra pellet to kill max resilience guardians. They're already meta. They're even more meta. Breach grenade launchers increase direct impact damage by 40%. Now, this works out to be roughly a 15% overall damage buff, though total damage varies depending on the blast radius stat. Reduce disorienting grenade radius for both damage and the disorientation effect by 15%. Increase the mountain tops PV damage to make it competitive with other breach loaded grenade launchers. Reverted a change from season 12 that made mountain top less accurate while airborne. Wow, they actually reverted that. That's why we were just using it the other day. And it goes crazy when you shoot it from the air. Literally, you'd be pointing at someone and just hits a hard left. Now, heavy grenade launchers increase the stats of edge transit. All right, now exotics. Updated perk descriptions to include subclass verbs for the following weapons. These weapons already had this functionality, but just wanted to explain in the perk descriptions. The so Sunshot, Player's Lance, 1000 Voices, and Levina's Breath. So those are the ones that got their things, the, the, the little uh, perk readouts finally updated. Now, Whisper of the Worm, increased total ammunition from 18 to 24 before reserve mods. 1000 Voices, increased total ammunition from 7 to 11 before reserve mods. Quicksilver Storm, increased the shots needed to trigger rockets by 50%. And reduce grenade area of effect damage versus combats by 37.5%. We do have pre and post. Uh, we will have post testing on this. We'll be taking a look, but this on paper is pretty substantial. We'll see exactly how big of a nerf this is. Now, the last word increased base damage by 6%. Forerun increased base damage by 6%. What they didn't mention right here, guys, especially on, on these, I'm pretty sure that's applicable to both PV and PvP, right? Okay, both. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Now, perks. Reintroducing Dares of Eternity weapon perks that were previously removed. These can now roll on new drops or be added to shape versions of the weapon. Master of Arms reduce damage bonus from 20% to 15%. Magnificent Howl precision final blows grant stacks and reloading converts the stacks into Magnificent Howl rounds that deal greatly increased damage and have additional range. Getting a precision kill with a Magnificent Howl active converts an additional round. Again, we want to see if it stacks with Lucky Pants. Micro Missile. Redesign this perk to be a weapon intrinsic. It's rebuilt to do less direct damage versus players, but with dramatically more self physics impulse. Retuned its PvE damage to be more competitive with other breach loaded grenade launchers and increased its reload speed slightly. Since this is now an intrinsic on Mountaintop, Micro Missile has been replaced with Rampage in the first trade slot on older versions of the weapon. Okay, interesting. Rampage as, a, as an intrinsic on the old Mountaintop? Okay. Now, permeability. Fix an issue. Where this perk was causing the slammer sword to get stuck on the strand damage time. Amalon, fix an issue where the overflowing the magazine could break the Amalon origin perk. Deconstruct, deconstruct would no longer activate on scorch, threatening stasis shatters, and jolt damage. Slice, fix an issue that would cause slice to lose stacks when shooting an enemy with a weapon that has rapid rate of fire. And headstone, fix an issue where headstone's cooldown was using the wrong icon. Headstone now uses the standard cooldown icon instead of a stasis buff icon. Okay. Now, crucible only changes. Reduce flinch taken by all primary weapons by 15%. Sunshot. Increase precision damage by 11%. Wish in to reduce base damage by 5%. Full run and remove the critical hit damage bonus that was supposed to be just for primary ammo sidearms and replace that with the 6% global base damage bonus. So the buff that we just mentioned above. Now corrected several weapons getting the wrong ammo mounts from either the special ammo crates or meter systems, including buried bloodlines and some other or some fusion rifles. Uh, now other fixes. Fix an issue. we reprise Dreaming City weapons could not obtain the rare shader Burnish Dreams or the legendary shader Blue Shift Dreams. Improve the chance a player will obtain the Burnish Dream shader when dismantling a weapon with the shader. Improve the likelihood of Blue Shift Dreams appearing on Dreaming City weapons. Fix an issue where the last right scout rifle had an incorrect appearance. Fix an issue where the Xenology quest incorrectly stated, stated that having an exotic cipher would prevent rewarding another despite the player being eligible. Fix an issue where Word of Crota was using the incorrect stack group. Fix a photosensitive issue with Outbreak Perfected. Fix an issue where Mountaintop and Yon's hipfire reticles were not centered. Fix an issue with Vengeful Whisper where an arrow was visible when holstered and stored on the player's back. Fix an issue where the updated Dreaming City weapons were not appearing in the collection. And fix an issue where notifications specific to the coil could appear in Riven's Lair. All right, we, we got a few more here, guys. Abilities reduce the cost of strand fragments at the Puka Pond from 200 strand meditations to 100. Guys, this is a great way. If you haven't gotten everything from strand, you can get it very easily with it just being 100 now. Fix an issue where the overload or anti-barrier capabilities granted through artifact mods or subclass keywords could reduce ignition damage. What? Created by some weapons. We must test this. Yes, this actually caused an issue. 
Matter of fact, this caused there was there was a lot of issues with this. But yes, ignition damage was being dialed down. I didn't think they were gonna fix this. They didn't even mention this before, but that's a huge W. Bounties and pursuits fixing issue were completing the 2023 Moments of Triumph title did not count towards the appropriate Guardian rank objectives in general. Fix an issue with the dares and wellspring fire team finders would try to launch the salvage activity. Fix a visual issue causing the chill out finisher effects to persist after the finisher ends. Fix an issue that was causing the ascendant realm sky to block out the dreamy city skybox in certain areas. Fix various world art issues in the crucible roots and crucible ice. And fix an issue where players could regenerate skimmer energy in midair by resummoning their skimmer. Oh. I'm sure somebody's gonna figure a workaround. Guys, that is your patch notes. Let's play my content. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.